Hi, Lizzie. Thank you. Um, I have the great honor and pleasure of introducing the 2021 winner of the Robert A. Cleland Pursuit of Peace Award tonight, Kathy Kelly. And I'd originally prepared kind of a vita of Kathy's whole career as an activist, but I realized if I really did that, I'd be here till well past midnight and nothing else is going to get done all night. So I <laughs> that all together and I'm going to go in a different direction. Um, when I think of Kathy Kelly, I often think of a scene from the film Casablanca, the scene where Rick, the expat American who and barkeep, uh, is first meeting Victor Laszlo, who was the fictional head of the resistance to the Nazis in Europe, and he's expressing his admiration for him. And Victor Laszlo says, well, thank you, I try. And Rick says, we all try, you succeed. And that's kind of how I feel about Kathy Kelly and all the years that I've known her and known her work is that we all try, we all organize, we all write letters, we all campaign, we, we march in rallies, we do a lot to try and change the world. Um, few of us though, I think actually risk everything the way that Kathy Kelly does. Kathy has consistently put her body and her life on the line for causes. Um, for those of you that don't know about what Kathy has done, she goes to places most of us would never think of going. Um, Afghanistan, uh, the Iraq-Saudi border, uh, in, for 14 days at the beginning of the 1990 Gulf War, uh, Palestine, places we would probably be hesitant to go. So Kathy is a paradigm of the kind of courage and conviction that we all strive for, and at least for me, I usually fall short of, of my own expectations, uh, and certainly fall short of, of what Kathy has achieved. And there's something else that Kathy did that I think is, is truly remarkable. I would wager a lot of money that I could walk into any political, social, environmental meeting of any sort of group on the political left in Chicago of any stripe and mention Kathy's name and there would be universal, yes, good person, we, we love Kathy, Kathy's great. And having been members of a lot of these groups over the years, I think Kathy deserves a Nobel Peace Prize for that alone. Um, but that's, that's, you know, something on the other side. Um, one of the things that I think Kathy does is I think she provides a lot of, of uh, not just support, but inspiration for people. The fact that Kathy has this constant commitment to the possibility that a better world is possible has always inspired me because no matter what happens, Kathy keeps plugging away. She's still out there putting her body on the line, spending three months in prison or protesting the School of the Americas. For those of you who don't know, that used to be a military training installation in Georgia where the US trained the troops and the torturers of a lot of Latin American governments. Uh, it was very controversial. There were yearly protests. People would cross over into the school, get arrested, go to jail. Kathy spent three months in prison. And, and I, I'm just wondering, you know, how many of us would be willing to go to prison for three months to support, uh, you know, the kind of the causes that we believe in. Um, so, um, it's her steadfast belief in justice and this willingness to put everything on the line that I think makes Kathy such an appealing and inspirational character. And I'm really pleased to see her getting this recognition. Um, sometimes, sometimes people aren't appreciated if they're in their hometown the way they should be, the way they are appreciated not only around the country, but around the world. So it's good to see Kathy received this honor. And Kathy, um, I am so pleased and honored to be able to present this to you. Uh, and congratulations. Well, thank you so very much, Michael, for, for that uh, kind and uh, generous uh, delivery of, 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 of the award. And I also want to say that um, when I was a young teacher uh, at St. Ignatius College Prep, 
um, there were textbooks that I could bring into the classroom about peace and justice. Um, so I would bring in Bob Cleland's newsletter. And, and so many of my classes were shaped around Bob Cleland's newsletter. And I think I, I helped talk myself anyway into a more radical perspective. And so I, I actually thank Bob a great, great deal and, and all of his family members as well for helping kind of nurture me toward a point where um, uh, I quit teaching. I found myself uh, sitting on top of a nuclear missile silo site. I had just planted corn on top of that missile silo site, believing land was meant to grow corn and wheat. And this was part of a joint action of many other Midwesterners. We, we were sure we had to take a stronger step in regard to, to the terrible militarism and the threats of nuclear war. And so, um, I was arrested, but initially four soldiers came, you know, camouflage and helmets and combat boots and rifles and walkie talkies. And they surrounded the site and um, gave me orders on what I was to do. And, but then three of them took off and left one soldier with me who had a gun you know, aimed at me. And I, I think I lasted about a minute and a half in silence. And then I started to talk and tell him about why we had done what we did. And you know, at one point, I then asked him, do you think the corn will grow? And he said, I don't know, ma'am, but I sure hope so. And now I'm handcuffed, right? And um, then he asked me, ma'am, would you like a drink of water? And I said, oh, yes, please. So if you can imagine, you know, there weren't bottled water um, realities in those days. He had a canteen and he said to me, ma'am, please tip your head back. And I did. And that soldier squeezed the water from the canteen and poured it down ma'am's throat. And I think actually that was one of the best lessons in my life. I mean, he did an act of kindness for a complete stranger, but also it was an important lesson because you know, this fellow's job is to guard the nuclear weapon, right? And here's somebody who's sitting on top of the nuclear weapon as an act of protest. But he took the time to say that giving ma'am a drink of water was actually the most important thing to do. And what if in our world today, like the DePaul students who in past years have said, getting water to children in Yemen is more important than protecting our weapons. What about with all of the 800 bases we have all around the world, if we could say, no, 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 getting water to children in Flint, Michigan, who can't drink clean water is more important than protecting our obscene and our pernicious and our terrible weapons. What if we were able to say to children in future generations, we want you to have water. And so we're going to educate ourselves to learn how to cope with climate catastrophe, and we're no longer going to let the military constantly have the upper hand because we realize that there, there can't even be a rational discussion about climate catastrophe and pandemic and the terrible prison industrial complex and all of the things that plague our society if we don't dismantle the militarism. So I'm so grateful to Peace Action because steadily, you confront the militarism, you don't accept the militarism. And I'm so pleased to see you challenging the bases, the terrible, terrible extension of bases all over the world. Do you know there were 500 United States military bases in Afghanistan alone? And so my young friends from Afghanistan say so wisely, blood doesn't wash away blood. So um, Robin Kimmerer writes about a, a hunter who had a very big successful hunt. He had loads of meat and through an event and um, I mean, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't want to say that this is pro eating meat, but he threw an event and, and everybody had plenty to eat. And an anthropologist asked this hunter, you know, don't you think maybe you should have put something aside for some time when you might not have as much uh, meat as you have had tonight? And the hunter leaned back and said, I store my meat in my neighbor's belly. 
So I hope that will be true for all of us. It will store our education, our goodness, our dreams, our hopes, and all of our many, many talents in one another, recognizing we are all part of one another. Lizzie, I wish you well at every step ahead for your future and to Charles and Liz, it's so great to see you come aboard. Um, so everybody and nobody out and let's look forward to working together. Thank you.